All right, so we're going to go through the slides for uh, that's been with this this week pretty quickly. We'll start with modulo. Uh, basically, it is inter integer ar arithmetic. So when you divide something, you only get the, you get the the first portion, which is you know if, if we look at uh, one divided by uh, sorry three three divided by two, you only get an answer of one. Uh, we look at like seven divided by two, you get an answer of three because it. It, so it's again that's division. The modulus is the remainder portion. So seven divided by three, you get a remainder of one. And, and here they've got a couple of examples of how you know four divided by three you get. So it goes in cleanly into that once, and you've got a remainder of one. Again, five div uh, modulus three. You have a mod. You basically divides by in that cleanly once. You get a remainder of two. Again, they've got the modular example. And this is this is used to like board coordinates. Uh, this is used to if you're going between a single dimensional array to a to a multi dimensional array, module is just going to be one of your, your pieces that are going to be there. Division is going to be the other half. Uh, clamp basically you put a value in and it keeps it within those two values. Um, pretty much it's a mathematical function. Basically again here they show it right here. Uh, calculate power attack, base attack, time the modifier, and they would keep it in between, in between a value of 500 and 2,000 in this case. What these are, you know, depends on the application. Min max, basically, if you put uh, something into a min, basically it is going to keep it underneath that top value. Max retains the, the maximum value between the, the inputs, essentially. So these are all essentially math functions we're looking at here. Uh, you've seen set material. We've used it already. We used it with the um, material changer. Again, what is the target? Is what what the component you're going to change? Uh, element index, basically what what material index you're going to, and the new material. And here they're doing a begin overlap and end overlap, going between the, the hex pulse and the uh, in this case the normal hex material. Uh, enable input, it allows uh, Blueprint to respond to events such as keyboard, mouse, and gamepad. Um, <clears throat> this is so basically, um, and it, it's basically it's like what is the target, basically in this case is what actor is going to be enabled. And then the Blueprint, basically the player controller, what controller or what player are we going to respond to inputs from? Um, Here's the thing about this note. This is breaking the normal chain of what, who is controlling what and what, where and why. Um, who can enable input? Normally, um, basically, we can do the the input on the pawn that we are controlling, but this now moves beyond that and enables input on other objects that are not necessarily controlled. So that's something. It, it it's we're starting Unreal. There's the old Unreal way of doing things. This is starting to break that and enabling other things. So be 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 generous with this. And in fact, I actually rewrote today's lab because um, they they wanted you to do uh, basically where uh, it was enabling input on another object and then disabling when you're going in and out of a trigger. Um, and that typically you would not do that. Is enable. Uh, and then there's a disable node as well. Uh, set input game mode in UI. Uh, who's the player controller? Uh, which is the focus, focus? So this is again what what asset to bring in? Uh, in in mouse lock mode. It's how the mouse will be handled. Do not lock. Um, this is this is if you were looking to do like um, lock the mouse in the center of the screen um, and so that you can keep it um, keep so you're just reading the delta. Uh, high mouse turn capture whether a mouse should be hidden. So. These are, what are they doing here? So in this case, they're showing the, the, the mouse and they're adding the panel option to the, to the viewport. So they're basically doing, basically in this case, they're basically, what? Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is this is popping in again. Here's a note for you, another note for you. We're not going to actually use this this week, 
Uh, but here is, again, set input mode and UI. So it's basically popping a, uh, a UI piece to the screen. Uh, teleport, we've used this. Teleports an actor specific location. Uh, if there's obstacle location, you move to a nearby place if there's no, if there's no collision. And, you know, teleport, we've used this already. Uh, this is an interesting one, a bounding, a, a random point in bounding box. So basically, um, so this is a vector that contains the central position of the box's tent, and this is, uh, contains the dimensions of the box that defines the 3D three volume. So what we're, we're looking is we're saying, hey, here is um, a center of a box. So some some location, and then we're then saying inside these extents, uh, length, width, and height, get me a random point in that space. Here they are. There. This is in this case, uh, spawn game item. Where is the for loop? Here we go. So they're getting the so they're so they've they've created a. Uh, an actor call you know, a box trigger called uh, the spawn area. They're getting the bounds of that and plugging that into its origin box stat. So we're so they're basically getting the bounds of it. I'm surprised they don't have um, a version of this where they're just just plugging in a uh, collision, and that's converting it into the trans. Again, we've been we've been um, basically the, again. Here is the. The bounds they've been plugging into the, into a transform. Uh, select basically uh, option one, option two. This is basically give, give it a um, index we can determine by the return type can be boolean, byte, integer, num. So that's the return. Um, Yeah, this is this is a ba basically um, your switch case essentially in this case. Here we go. So in this case, they've add, they've dropped in uh, option zero, basically. So spawn point index. So this is another way that you could have done. Um, so you could, in this case, they've 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 created variables spawn point one, spawn point two, spawn point three, and they've plugged it into the select. Uh, based on the index. Again, we've done this with um, a, an array. So if you weren't using an array, you had only had a few few variables, you could use select to, to select it. Um, as opposed to if you had, uh, you know, again, not sure how many you were going to have, you'd use an array. So this is another way of doing the same thing in this case. Uh, here is difficulty selecting total number of enemies so this is this is now plugging in i believe uh integers all right let's get to the next set of slides because they're more important uh for this week's lab because they're going to traces so ray traces essentially um a trace can be done by channel or by object type so for our purposes, like here is object type world static, or it can be world dynamic. And we'll actually, let's go into Unreal just to bring up an object so we have a better idea here. So here's the floor. What they're talking about is down here, where is the collision? Not want to delete the floor. Wait. Oh, light mouse. Oh, I'm looking at world settings. I'm in the wrong panel. Here we go. There we go. Collision. All right. So what they're talking about, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, is what is... Um, it's getting down here into again like here is uh what is the presets again what they're talking about down here is well, the presets here we go i'm going to go to customs to open open this up so here is object type that they're talking about so this is right now the floor is a world dynamic um actually we really want this to be static could is it a pawn is it a physics body is it a vehicle is it a destructible object so there are different object types in here right here uh is it collision enabled is it an option you can 
so this is this is there are different object types and there's an array there's an enum that this is again this is the enum type of what should be considered when as it moves now let's go back up here again mobility basically is it static is it stationary is it movable and for our purposes like everything is coming in is movable right now um for our purposes we're going to make this static and this is going to be important because this will take this out of um, consideration for, you know, we're, we're going to look for dynamic objects. Our floor is definitely not a, it not, is not. So we should, probably should have made this static at the beginning. Um, let me see. And just for the sake of argument right now, I'm going to go in, I'm going to make uh, a box. Um, and I'm gonna make this four, four. And that's gonna we're gonna move that up 200. Uh, I'm gonna put this at 500, negative 500, just so that we have something to work with um, in our level at this at this point. And I'm just gonna just, just duplicate and put this uh, back at 500. 500 and then I'll move this um, the negative 500 and then I'll move there we go I'll say 2000 negative I'm sorry this is a positive value all right um I'll bring this in there we go so I just gonna I'm gonna set this up just so I have things in my level to work with, and we'll make we'll 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 alter this one later on. All right. So I basically have gone. I've made a new level, um, and I've clicked basic. I'm gonna not cancel because I've got the level already here, and I'm going to go to my content draw. Um, I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm gonna call this uh, Lab09. And I'm just going to go in. I'm going to save the level as Lab09. And now I'm jumping around at the moment. All right. Let's get back to the slides. So uh, those who have been working with Unity, you, you got the the um, hit results. This is the hit result structure. Um, basically, what is the, and this is they have a node to break hit result. So there's a, the structure hit, and they have a node specifically to break it down. Lots and lots of things that you can place place with here. Start trace, start trace end, the hit item, the bone item, hit bone name, hit commit material, hit actor, physical material, normal uh, location, distance when it happened uh the blocking hit the, you know it was it a blocking hit uh does it have it is this the initial overlap the big ones is blocking hit indicates that if there's a blocking hit location is where it hit the normal uh hit in, vec in world space and the hit actor so those are the big ones that you'll be using so the node that you're going to use is called line trace for objects and so Basically, your first, the first thing that we're going to do, and in fact, um, go back to the content drawer. I'm going to go to the third person. I'm going to grab the third person uh, character. I'm going to copy it to the Lab 9 folder. And uh, this is a new um, project, just so you know. So uh, this is not doesn't have the coin collection game. Um, reason is is that I did the, I did everything for your lab in the other project. So this is why you have a new one this week. But don't don't worry. Um, and then we're just going to go in here. We're just going to rename this um, BP. Let me make this bigger. Lab09 Pawn. Um, I'm going to go to my world settings just quickly right now. Go to... Where is the classes? There we go. Game mode. Um, we're going to basically select the third person game mode. This, 
to be off for our purpose right now. And then we'll go into the selected game mode and we'll just, oh, it's already selected the VP09 pawn right here. Normally that should not be the case, but that's what we want for our setup right now. And that gives us, you know, our character. All right. So that's our basic setup for, for our world right now. We're going to go in, we're going to basically going to add to first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring in our keyboard and we're going to use the e, e key and we're going to have to scroll down to get this result um, and essentially on pressed well, all that we're going to do is we're going to do a trace for objects I need to put line trace in front of it. That's why I'm not seeing it. There we go. Line trace by uh, four objects. All right. So we're going to break this down. Um, there's an array of object types. And we're basically, this is a make array function. In this case, it knows that... Um, it's of, of type the enum, array of type enum, um, object type query enums, essentially. And that's basically, is it world static? Is it world dynamic? We want to use world, world dynamic. Again, all those that we saw in the collision. So we just want to look for world dynamic objects right now. Um, this is going to get messy pretty quickly. Um, where, where do we want to this out. Where do we want to start? Um, essentially from, we're going to use the camera, the file camera. So we're going to um, like drag that in and we're going to start from its location. So this is going to be actor, sorry, get get world get actor Oh no, this is a component. Get component. Here we go. Get world location. And that's going to be our start. Um, the N is basically, again, it's going to be our world location. Um, so what we're going to do basically with the, so one thing that we want to do is make a variable here, and this is going to be basically going to be our uh, check distance, and this will be a float, there we go, float, we'll compile, um, default value, we, I'm going to put in 6,000 in here, um, I started at something really small, I started at 5,000. 5,000 worked, but it was fluky. 6,000 seemed to be a, a good value. Um, we'll go through and we'll, we'll under, get a better understanding of what, what is going on. Like one of the things that we'll do right here is we will put a print uh, string, in this case, E pressed, just so that we know that we've, we've pressed this key. So for the camera, basically it is, we want to start with the, again, the follow camera one more time. In this case, we want to get, get the forward vector. And we want to multiply that by our check distance. Let me maybe move this back a little bit. And we're going to get the world location, and we'll add that into that. Add the so we're going to start with the world location. Add so we're creating a new vector, multiplying again. This is a value of, of distance one times the check distance. And then we're adding it to the world location, so that will end up being our end. Draw a debug type. Um, we don't need to do a direct debug type for right now. If you wanted to look at some like persistent duration one frame, you could do that as well. In, for duration, 
you know, we'll, we'll leave that for none for right now. But we want it to debug. <coughs> also, ignore self. So ignore the the the, the self being the this act, this whole actor. So if it hit, touched the mesh, it touched the arrow, touch anything else, we're going to ignore that, and that's per purposely fine. So with that now set up, um, what we want to do is basically want to do an if statement. And so this is if there was a hit, we want to plug that in. And if it's true, basically we're going to break Sorry, we need to drag off here. Right, hit result. The uh, reason why it wasn't is con its content. So basically, we're just uh, exact node. Um, basically, the out hit is what's the context sensitive. And we're going to open this up. And so for our purposes, um, we need to compile this see and then so our purpose is right now we're going to basically going to uh, we're going to do a print print string and we're going to here's the it actor basically we're going to just, just get print out display name actually we'll do this break this we'll actually do a uh, append So we'll print out to the screen what what we've hit. Now we'll do more. We'll do we'll, we'll actually do a lot more um, and later on, uh, but we need to, we need to start with this at least. Let's go here and we'll press play. If I go down to the bottom, you can see I've hit the floor. So the floor is still dynamic. Um, here is hit the floor. The floor's huge. Hold on. Uh, I'm not going to change the Z. But I'm going to make this, this much smaller so that I'm not... So here is... Um, so I can ignore because I want to. I don't want to. The why is it just shining? We'll come back to this one moment. We'll come back to this one moment. Um, let's go back to our slides just quickly. Get through through that as fast as possible. Again, start end object types. Um, there's a couple different traces you can trace by channel. So this is uh, what, what is it can be visibility. You know, look for different cameras. Um, Multi-line trace by channel. So this is getting multiple hits. Uh, shape traces, box trace for objects. Uh, capsules trace by by channel. Here is the, talking about debugging. Uh, spawning destroying again we've seen the spawn actor you've done spawn destroying actors as we've seen this before uh, attaching an actor comp to a component uh, so you can again add add a um, again like here is in this case they're adding a, a sword actor to that's the target that they're adding um, they're adding it to the skeletal mesh in this case they're adding it to the socket name again um, so again, there are bones, um, but we can also add again points on the mesh, which we are in Unreal called sockets. Uh, play sound and location. This is now they've opened up everything. We've basically used the sound asset and location. Sounds audio component. Um, spawn emitter location. We've used this already. Uh, and then we can destroy a component, which would be in this case the emitter. So in this case, 
the return value here is you we they've established they've uh, assigned it to this emitter reference in this case they're storing the component so a um, great example of this let's go in actually let's create let's I'm gonna create an uh, a new actor right now uh, it's gonna be an actor a BP uh, fire And basically what we're going to do essentially is we're going to create a, a variable. Uh, so this is going to be the fire emitter. Object types emitter. And we may change this. And basically we're going to uh, we'll compile this. We'll go into the event graph. Um, and we're basically not going to worry about any other events, but we'll create two two events for our purposes. Um, add event. This is going to be start fire. It's going to be create sorry spawn emitter at location and cascade particle system component. So what we were looking to do is change this to cascade particle system component will be an object reference. And so we'll um, set that here. And then we will go down here and we'll create another event. And with the reference of the fire emitter, we will uh, what was the new one more time? Oh, they're just using destroy component. Here we go. Now this is not actually doing anything at the moment, um, but this is how we would use that fire emitter. And again, we'll just set the uh, where is fire. And I'm using a fire one again. We'll we can go come back to this later um, and actually use it. But we'll compile this. We'll go back to the slides just quickly. And they're going to show animation set target blend uh, with blend. So this is what this is dealing with the animation. I'm going to go through these. We've worked through timelines. Yeah. Uh, tick event and delta time. So here is again. Uh, the, here's delta seconds times the speed. So you know this is moving an actor based on delta delta location x. So they're moving down the x-axis based on how fast it's going times time delta time. Again, um, the delta seconds, you say. Uh, time delta time is the unity term. In terp 2, again, this is where's the current, where's its target, um, what's the delta time after the fact, what's the interp speed. And again, here is display. Again, this is a display health current, uh, the actual health, and then um, delta seconds, and they're going, um, hey, del what is the, what is the, uh, interpretation um, how fast is it going is it going to go so it's over one second essentially and this is going to uh, basically update the display health so uh, health bar uh, like fighting games that just that shrink down over time here you go this is the F interp node all right so let's get to the lab itself let's um, bring up the here that's not it. That's not it. I'm looking for your document. Let's download it. So, again, I have basically rewritten this.
Yeah. So the first thing I'm asked, I actually actually do in the lab is to basically create a uh, class name that BP interactable. Is this everything? No. Where is? That's not. Oh God. Okay. That's not it. Oh God, where is all that? Where's the... Is it hot on the... F okay, so your Lab 9 document um, does not have everything uh, included in it, and I apologize, and I'm missing. I don't know what happened to the full document, um, so that will be that will be updated later tonight. Let me just make sure. Oh God. Okay. All right. So your there your lab nine. We're gonna go through everything in your lab nine document, um, and then I have to go back and remake the document for you. Uh, so I apologize. So back in Unreal. Um, so we need a new blueprint class, and it's going to be an actor type. And we're gonna call this BP interactable. Um, for our purposes in here, um, the big piece that we need to add is basically on in the is an event function we're going to call on use. And basically this is going to print out a string and this is going to be an append. And so we're going to just put is being used as, and what we're going to do essentially get the get actor now nah, we'll just use self and we're going to get its display name and we're going to plug that into the append All right, so this is the on use function. We're gonna, what we're gonna do here is basically we're gonna put objects in the scene that we'll be able to use. Let's go back to the viewport just quickly. And for our purposes right now, I'm going to add a cube. So there'll be a static mesh. Um, I'm gonna bring this out and I'm gonna make this half the size and twice the height. And I believe I need to move this up 200. Nope, just 100. So that will be at the scene root. And I'm going to give this basically, um, oh, that's the, the static mesh. I want to go to the material. I'm going to go to the hex. And I'm going to use the mtex hex tile just so that I have something to show on, on the screen. So I got a material on here. And, I, and again, this cube, basically, we're going to rename this to model. This is just so we have something to look at in the scene to interact with. So we go back into our, we're going to drop this into the scene. All right. So now we have a class to work with. Let's go back to our pawn. 
Um, I'm actually going to, let's see. I'm going to stack this. And so what, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cast to the BP interactable class. And if that's the case, we can then use the on use function. So if we don't hit something that's not interactable, this won't this won't kick off. So what we'll see is E, e has been pressed. We'll see what we hit, and then finally on use will basically we'll see in the again we'll we'll see three things again. So E press, hit the interactable, and then you can see the BP interactables being being used. And again, we can go here, and this is basically we can change the name of this. Let me get a little more room over here for the moment. This is going to be interact pillar. And so we'll go, we'll save the scene, save the level, come back in, we'll go up and hit E. You can see that the interact pillar. So that's the name in the scene. That, that's why where where we use this display name. All right. Let's take this and move this into something more interesting. We are now going to use this as the base object, the base class for a whole slew of different interactables. And this is what your 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 what your uh, lab document is now missing. So the first one we're going to do, uh, we're going to create a childhood blueprint class, and this will be the P BP lamp. All right, I'm going to go in. I'm going to set this back to one across the board. I'm going to change the static mesh to the lamp in the starter, and this is going to be the uh, lamp wall. I'm going to bring this back down to zero, so it's basically up up against the wall. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to bring this back. This is the the lamp material to bring this back. So we've got our, our lamp at the moment. Um, I'm going to add a point light. And I'm going to bring this up above it just, and I'm going to bring it out. So it's just right there. I'm going to bring it out just a little bit. Um, and the reason for this is that I don't want the light to be, basically we're going to plug this up against the wall. So we've got this pretty much set up. Let's we'll compile this. Let's we'll just put this into our world right now. Um, and I'm for purposes for color right now, um, I'm just going to basically have a yellow color, a pure yellow color. So one, one red, one green, zero blue. All right, we're going to compile. And then uh, let's we'll just do the, the function right now. We're going to do, use an override. We're going to go to the on use override. We're going to keep the parent on use because that's basically saying what what it's being used. Um, and basically, we're going to grab uh, the point light, and, we're, and this is the case we're going to use the toggle. So we'll toggle visibility, and we'll compile that. So now that we've got the lamp, we'll save everything. Let me see, we can close close that. We can close this. Uh, we close the pawn. Let's go back to our our world, and we're gonna just go right up here. And I'm gonna put the the lamp on this side of the wall. So uh, we'll do it 100. So negative 500. So the middle of it. So there we go. So when we go, we can now walk up to it. Why is 
Is it not hitting it? Let me just take a look at the world dynamic. So I'm actually going to go back to the model itself. I'm going to go to, let's just make this bigger. I may not be, I may, it may be just being particular at the moment. So I'm going to make this twice as large. And there we go. I got it. It's, so it's being particular about where exactly the hit area. Again, I have to get that in the center of the screen um, as opposed to, again, what was the question again? Oh, yeah, I'm hitting E. Yeah, so remember in the, the pawn, we set up E to be the, the to check for the, to the ray cast. It's an interact, yes. I did show you that. We'll go one more time. That's in the pawn. And that is essentially down here. Um, we are, again, here's the string trace, trace for line objects. We're getting the camera location because we're starting with the camera because we're in the third person. So we're getting the camera location. We're adding, um, then we're getting its forward vector and multiplying it by our check distance. And then adding it to the, the that to generate the start and end of our trace. And then we are just trying to get, make sure we're getting world dynamic objects. Okay. So let's go back into our content draw. We're going to make another blueprint child class. Uh, BP, it goes boom. And for our model, basically, I know there is a a laser pointer material. So basically something that's red. Uh, again, we're going to go to the override and we're going to set a get the on use and override that. And this is again what you would expect. Um, play, I'm sorry, spawn emitter at location. Play sound at location. Again, this is, well, again, obviously this is the uh, explosion cue. And this will do, destroy the actor. All right, so uh, get a reference self. Uh, get the actor transform. We're going to break it, break this struct pin to make for our purposes um, and I'm going to just basically going to just plug this right in again this is going to be the uh, explosion I'm just gonna cheat right now and just plug that in right over here so I'll compile and so we'll go into our world and we will drop it in right here and I'm going to duplicate these a couple, so I got three of them. Are they in the wall? That's fine. And if I can press play, I can go up to them. And they go boom. So again, I went fast. So here again, here are the, the pillars. These version of the pillars with that red material on them. And in one of the things that we may want to do with the explosion is maybe we scale this up to, uh, I'll do threes. Make the make the, the, the particle much bigger because our object is bigger. There we go. And just for the sake of argument for our lamp, I'm going to go back to its on use 
and I'm just going to basically do a play sound. Uh, I'll do sound, and this will be. Use the compile success is what my. And then we will. Location is going to be. I need to pull this over. Again, we'll just get the actor location. Make sure we save everything. We'll go. And now when I interact. As some, something more than just the light turning on and off. So. All right. So we've already, already just by inheriting from interactable, we've got fun. We know overriding on use. We've done this two different ways. We've turned on. We've we've tur hit the object and it affected a component. Um, it played sound and then destroyed itself. We're going to then now build uh, two new. So there's, we're going to build a lift, and we're going to create a child of the blueprint class. And this is going to be our BP elevator. Um, we're going to do this one more time. We're going to do BP uh, create a child uh, of, of the elevator. This will be BP uh, call call ele ele elevator essentially. So let's go, let's build the elevator. So in this case, we're going to start with the model here. Um, and this is going to be our, basically going to be our lift object. So we need to, ch I'm going to change this to point two size. And I believe I did two, uh, three wide and two, two deep. So this is going to be our lift. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. Now it's going to duplicate as the, the original pillar, how we inherited. Um, and I'm also going to set this back down to zero. So this is basically set this to set again, set this to what we need. Actually, I'm going to put this at 200. Again, this was three wide, two deep, 0.2. Now the difference with this one, this model one, we're actually going to call this phantom endpoint. So what we're doing here is we're building a an editor piece. So the first so the first thing that we want to do is uh, change the material. And we want to grab let me see. Where's the translucent? Okay, here's M shader simple translucent. This is the material that we want. And basically it's going to it's going to basically we're making a translucent. This is going to be translucent. Um, and partly this is an object that is again, we need to go to its collision first. And make sure that we've turned off character cannot step on and the character percent no collision. So, this is not interacting in the world. The other half of this that we want to is there's a, under rendering, there is a hidden in game. We want to turn that on. So we're going to compile. I'm just going to drop this into the world just quickly right now. So here's my elevator. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Put it up against the wall. So this is, we know this, this cube is, so negative 500 is where we want to be. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to change the model right here. Uh, go into, say, 1. Uh, I'll do 1.5. We'll change the phantom to 1.5 as well. So I'm editing the instance of this. And I'm going to put the lift right here. And I'm going to take the phantom endpoint. And I'm going to change its location. 
and this is basically I'm, ed I'm editing this in in the world and we'll come up um, now I'll do a little lip so the goal is that when we when the, the lift goes up it's gonna this is gonna be the point when I look in game you can see here is the lift again it's being used I haven't done anything with it yet but you can see that the other object is not visible anymore and that's what we want okay we've got our elevator in place we are going to then build we're going to build the ele elevator now um, let's go to the event graph and we're going to just get rid of all of these because we're not we're not doing anything on begin play we're not doing any, any overlap we're not doing any event tick um, our so basically, there are going to be two events we're going to create here. Add event, and this is going to be um, add custom event. And this is going to be uh, start lift. And the other event is going to be return lift. Now we are going to create a variable. We're going to we're going to need a variable here, and that's going to be, um, ha, and it's going to be called has been activated. And basically, what we're going to do is going to set that to be true, and I'll explain why we need this variable in a moment. Now this is going to plug in. We can get more space again. We're going to clear out details and now we're going to right click and we're going to create a timeline and this is going to be the uh, the lift control and then from here on the start lift chain we're going to go plug that into play and this is going to be plug into reverse all right now Update is and direction is going to plug into a function that effectively is going to control place the lift. So let's let's create a function, move lift, and we're going to add an input right here. Um, we're going to call it percent, and this will be a float. Compile. And then we're going to go back to the event graph. We'll just drop that in right now. Move lift. So we'll plug in the update right there and the percent right in there. Um, why did it not? Oh, um, I need to go back to the, hold on. Hold on. Uh, I need to go back to the lift control. We'll come back. We'll, we have to make a track. We haven't done that yet. So. Um, on finished, now this is where get things get gets interesting. So basically, when we, when this finished node gets called, is but basically when we play press play, when we get to the end of the the timeline, it's going to call finished. But when we call reverse, when we get back to the beginning of the time timeline, it's going to call it's going to call finished as well. So the issue is that uh, basically what we wanted to make sure is that if if we are have been activated, we want to call the reverse lift node uh, event. So I'm going to take the branch here, and this is basically grab the has been activated. So if it has been activated, we know that we're at the we're at the play on the play side of things. Um, first thing that literally we're going to do is going to set uh, sorry uh, set this to be false. I'm going to bring in another variable, and this is going to be the um, return delay. And this is going to be a float. We are basically going to, there is a delay node. In this case, this is going to be get return delay. We'll plug that right in. And after that delay, we're going to then. Um, call the return lift node all right without this here basically every time we hit the re the return node it's going to basically um, delay and then call return lift again 
and again and again and again and again. So this basically helps us basically, we only want to call return lift when we've gone up and we hit the end of it. All right, let's set the, the timeline. Again, we'll add a, tr a, fl a float track, and this is going to be percent. I'm going to set the time length to two seconds, so we'll be, we'll be pretty zippy. And we're right click, we're going to add a key, key here and add a key up here, and then we'll just uh, again, set the time to two, value of one, and this is going to be time of zero, value of zero. So basically, we're just basically doing a, a straight, a straight curve. Uh, basically, I mean, we could create a curve with more keys, but I just want to go the basics. Uh, zero here, one up here at the end of the timeline. Uh, we will, we can go, now that we've done that, we can go back to the event graph. Here's the percent. We can plug that in over here. So oh, pretty, pretty cool, pretty, pretty straightforward so far. I'm going to compile. I'm going to save everything. And now we are going to go into the move lift function. All right. Um, we are going to use the lerp function. And we're going to use the vector version of it. So the percent is basically, so what we want is the start so this is the other thing that we will, will need to do here under variables. We're going to make a new variable called uh, uh, starting location. And this is going to be a vector. And we're going to get the starting location and we'll plug that into A. And then we'll get our model endpoint. And we're going to get the relative location. All right, so the math behind the LERP function, and we, we kind of did this with the sliding doors. Oh, come on, get in, the, get in line. There we go. Bring these in. We knew, the, we knew the distance, so we basically were multiplying the distance between the two and then adding it to the lo location. Here, this LERP function is basically, we know our starting location, we know our end location. So it's basically B minus A, plus a is going to be the return value. Sorry, b minus a times the alpha. Again, alpha is between 0 and 1. So we know this is going to return the return value. So basically, our model set, and we're going to set the relative uh, location. Again, we're using relative location because we were working all with inside of uh, this default scene room. So I've already rotated 90 degrees. I could rotate it. I could turn it and do a bunch of different things. Again, I'm going to plug in the return value, and we should be OK. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is go back to the event graph, and then I, need, I do need the begin play. Here's the starting location. We're going to set that. And that's going to be our model. get relative location. Again, this is so that we're working within the scope of the object itself. And so we can move the lift around and scale it, do what we want, and not worry about how it's, how it's going to perform. So I'm going to compile. And when we go back, we will press play. We'll go up to it, point right down, you can see, and I forgot one important thing in the elevator. We forgot to go to, again, under functions, we didn't override on use. And basically, what we didn't call was, uh, we didn't call start lift. Uh, let's take a look at the, that is true. Thank you for catching that. So we'll move this down a little bit. There we go. We'll save everything and now we should be in play. And we'll go, and there we go, up where it goes. 
Now, the thing that I didn't set in the elevator, uh, we didn't give a return delay. Uh, we're actually going to make this ed edible instance. So I'm actually not, I'm going to just compile. I'm going to leave the return delay zero here. I'm actually going to my world and I'm going to go into the return delay. We'll bring this out so it's bigger. Um, bring this out. And I'm going to actually put two in here. So we can go up to it. And then two seconds later, it's going to go back down. So, cool. Let's duplicate the lift. And I'm going to put this one over here, over the, over the, the lamp. And I'll bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to grab the, this cube. I'm going to bring this out a little bit further. And I'm going to grab the phantom endpoint. Uh, in this case, I'm going to bring it back down to zero, relative location zero. Uh, why is that? Why is that 30? That's interesting. Oh, OK. I'm going to bring this out over here. Actually, I'm going to make this cube bigger. Make this six. And I'm going to bring the phantom endpoint up higher. Bring this up out of the ground. I'll bring this up here. So here we go. We've got another elevator in this case. Bring this out. And for arguments take, I'm going to take this middle one. I'm going to put this up here. And I'm going to press play. So I use this elevator up. You can see this elevator is going to go on a diagonal. And I'm going to press blow that up and then I'm kind of stuck up here now all right this is where the our last object the call elevator is going to come into play and for the model I'm basically going to go here and going to basically do the hex pulse just so that I've got something different um, on on this model now the first it needs a variable and it's going to be uh, I'm going to call it the elevator reference. And it's basically going to be BP. Come on. Uh, the type elevator. It's going to be an object reference. All right. We'll compile this. Um, basically, the event, basically, there's nothing in the event graph, but the, the what we'll need under, fun, we'll override on use. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is check is valid. That is not what I want. Let me grab the elevator reference. Let's get let's get the elevator reference, and we'll call. There we go. Is valid. Bring in not is time. Why is it? We'll plug that into the F, and this is just sim simply. Um, did 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 the level designer plug in? We'll we'll I'll see why this is important in one second. So if the if this has not been set, so it's none, this will return back uh, a, a false value. If it has been set, then this will track a, tr a true value. So in that case, now I know if the elevator has been set. Get elevator reference. We can then um, call start lift. And then we can go down here and print string. Hey, dummy. And it's, this is a level designer that we're, we're making fun of. So we might as well just say, call them straight out. Hey, dummy level designer, you didn't 
set set the elevator on the call. And this is wholly unnecessary. This is just so that we can see what happens um, and also make fun of our, our colleagues at the same time. As a level designer, I appreciate being made fun of. So, so we will save everything. We'll go in content draw. And so we'll do the first one over here. Put that right there. And I'm going to lock this for one moment. Actually, I don't need to lock it. Um, uh, let's go back to the call elevator. What I didn't do is I did not make this ed ed editable instance, which is what we want to do to set it in the editor. So now that we've done that, save everything. You can see now here's the elevator reference. And then the first one, this is the first elevator. I'm going to duplicate this. Um, and I'm going to basically, in this one, make this um, revert it back to none. We'll fix it. This will be for this elevator eventually, uh, but I'm going to leave this with none for the moment. I'll put this right over here. So we'll save everything. Okay, and we'll press play. We'll go up to this elevator. And we'll let it go back down. So two seconds gone back down. And then we'll see that it's being used. And it called the elevator back up. So the, here are our, we've got multiple objects working together to do things. Again, this basically we set up in the elevator, we created a, a event called call start lift, which kicks off everything. And basically, um, on interaction with this object, it starts to lift. But this object has a reference to that that lift object, and when that's valid, it calls. It makes you know we make sure it's valid. Um, and now we'll go to the other one. And now I've uh, set up a level like a Bethesda early Bethesda designer. Uh, and then over here, you can say, "Hey, it's being used." And then you can see that we bring up. The, The, we'll bring out the output log. Here is again the the log blueprint using message call elevator. Hey dummy, you didn't set the elevator on the call. So let's go and actually select this, and we know that this elevator reference is going to be the second elevator, which is this one right here. And so when we go press play again. We'll go through. We can call it back in the middle of it. Oh, hit it again. Here we go. Here is our complete level and play. And this is basically your assignment. Um, I will again go back and I've got to recreate the document. Um, I'm, I apologize. I thought. Um, it something must have gone wrong with the document. Um, it has it, it does have again, let's go through the document that you have. It does go over creating the in, interactable. It does uh, have you create the, 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 the 09 pawn. Um, it is showing you how to set this up, but it is a mess at the moment. Um, like it's getting the player camera. It's I I've I've done this cleaner, but the idea is here is that you're getting the camera, getting the actor location, getting the uh, transform vector. In this case, I've actually gone in rather than getting the camera player camera manager. Um, I've gone right into here and actually gone to the the, the follow camera instead, which is probably more structured. This is this is if you were in a generic player controller class, you would do this. But here we're doing this everything in the in the, the, the pawn class itself. We can go directly to the camera instead.
and in here you can see that the the maximum distance they've set it to 300. This was originally built for the first person template control uh, first person template. So that's why 6,000 is is being used here instead. Um, any questions about what's going on? What you need to do? Yeah, Wes. It will be. It will. I got to recreate the document. I've got to go back. Like I had built this whole document out, and it didn't somehow. It did not say properly. So you have half of your document. Like you've got you've got building the interactable, and you've got building the uh, the the pawn. Everything else, like everything that we inherited from, is missing out of the document currently. So right now, your lab, this lab lecture doc video is going to be really important in terms of those pieces. The lab document will be up. This document will be updated with all those pieces. I'm really frustrated because I, that's Monday. That's what I did Monday was to work on that document. It's all gone. So, question. You know, no, I'm using a new project. So why, why I made a new project because let me let me close this out for one moment. Uh, save selected. So the reason I use a new project. So I'm going to open up. Um, you don't need to make a new project. The reason is I'm going to open up. What's going on? Why is Oh, crying out loud, why is this opening up the same project over again? this off screen for one moment. My apologies. This is weird. Oh, cry out loud. Okay, so I can't up, I can't, there's an update that it wants for some reason. Um, so what happened is I did the work for the lab in the, what I normally lecture with. So rather than, um, let's actually go to, Working Unreal. Yeah, here is yeah, here's here's the project. So I'll open up this way. So I close the content browser. Um, and we go to map no so here is basically this basically this similar version of what you had what I did in lecture 
Again, this is three seconds to go up. So I basically did everything in here. So that's why I used a new a new project this week. Wanted to make sure I got the names correct. Like again, here it goes boom, interactable elevator, call lift two. I mean the, the same same thing as we did before. Uh, in this case, I got the uh, I got the lamp on this side with the shade over here. So a few differences, but not ma anything major. So that's why you saw a new project this week. But ultimately, it is the you know same idea as that. Hey. Um, lab nine is basically in its own folder. I've got the pawn here in its own folder. The level itself, we look at world settings is, you know, third person game, pawn 09, the default classes that, you know, that don't do anything. By de they're the holding classes. So that's same idea. Other questions? Again, I apologize about the lab document. Um, it will be updated. Um, if it's not done tonight, it'll be done tomorrow. And I'll put an announcement that the lab document has been updated correctly with, with everything for the other pieces. But again, let's look at the, the again, um, the lamp, the, the boom, the elevator, and the, li the call lift. These, these are all children of the original interactable class. And that's important. That's again, we're building. Hey, we build a, a core class to be the you know the big the big that's going to be the core of multiple of other classes. And then we can build out a slew of different objects pretty quickly. Again, like you saw, I built the lamp, the the lift, the call lift, the the boom, pretty quickly by overriding the on on use function. Very much like on the uh, back to the coin collection game, there is the on taken. Uh, function that we that we overrid overrid for the coin collection game. So, any other questions before I end this? And okay, I'm going to stop the recording right now.